showcasing the more of bushcraft black. So come walk with me. Before field testing a knife, I'm a firm believer that a man should really put the knife to the test. I've owned the Mora Bushcraft Black for over a year now. I've done trainings and also personal dirt time with this knife. And now that I feel that it's time to do a review on it. The overall length with the knife being in the sheath is about nine and a half inches. And the sheath itself is about seven and a quarter. The sheath itself is a hard plastic that's got a locker mechanism in it to keep it nice and secure. So if you kind of happen to get turned upside down or jarred a lot, the knife stays in place, which is an awesome feature of just about all more knives. It's got a dangler system on it for a belt. And of course, always in the back, I always keep a sail needle. That's another video. And to the knife itself. The knife has a rubber coated grip. The handle itself is a little less than an inch and a quarter. And the handle is about five inches, about five inches long. The overall length of the knife is about nine and a eighth. And the blade is approximately uh, about four and a quarter. Its width is almost uh, three quarters of an inch and uh, it's close to about an inch I mean excuse me about an eighth of an inch thick there's five criteria that I look for in a knife when I buy it first is non coated second is it has to have a 90 degree spine so you can uh, flake off a fair seam rod or do shavings off a, uh, for a feather stick has to be high carbon steel I like my knife blades to be more than four inches blade length but I've absolutely beat the crap out of this knife and like I said used it over for a year now and it has not let me down another criteria that I look for I like to be full tang and this knife blade is uh, about uh, three quarter tang so that means that the overall blade length actually would go to about right here and it ends that's kind of a downfall of this knife but still yet with the proper techniques of patoning this knife I have not had no trouble in uh, breaking this knife whatsoever so now we'll break down each criteria and why it's so the first criteria that I kind of look for in life like I said is a uh, nine degree spine you want it to be a sharp 90 degree spine so you can take a possibly a piece of fat wood and start making shavings with it Start gathering your material up and pile it up. So after you get enough shavings piled up, another reason why it's good to have a nine degree spine, take your fair seam rod, kind of get all the coating off of it. And you have fire. 
going to discuss about the blade length of the knife. Like I said earlier, I prefer anywhere from five to six inch blade. This is a little bit over um, four inches. But with this kind of size log, you're not going to have no problem because you got plenty of blade length in between your handle and your work. And you also have enough room between your work and the tip of your blade. But if the wood was bigger and you don't want to um, just be batoning the tip, but with proper technique on batoning wood, with this knife, you have no problem. The only thing that the blade length will interpret is the size of the logs you're processing down. And with proper technique, even though you only have a four inch blade and a three quarter tang on your knife, This has no problem in processing wood. Something I didn't discuss earlier, this knife blade has a scandy grind. What makes it excellent to make feather sticks. going to discuss why it's so important for your knife to be high carbon steel which the more bushcraft black tends to be high carbon steel with char cloth in your knife and a rock that I found off the landscape you can initiate fire Take your char, it's lit, put it inside of a bundle, and you have fire. Lastly, we're going to discuss it being non coated. Pretty much non coated is for rust protection. What I always done with my non-coated high carbon steel knives is take some kind of oil and sort of like season it. And I don't warm it up or nothing, but what I done, I took some uh, muzzle loading grease for the round ball or whatever, and I coated my knife. Some people may not recommend that, but that's what I do with my knives, and I don't have no problem. Um, after a while, the coating will wear off. But after I done that, I have no problem with it rusting. I may get a little bit of surface rust if my knife lays for a while without using it. But it ain't nothing. But it, I take a little bit of sand, put it on my blade, kind of wipe it off, and then take a rag, a wet rag, and wipe it off. No problem. Okay, now let's discuss price range. Right now, this knife will retail roughly around 50 bucks. Shipping, probably another 10, so 60 bucks. But 60 bucks for a knife like this, you can't beat it. Like I said, two downfalls of this knife, which I don't consider downfalls if you properly know how to use a knife, is it not being full tang and it not to be about two inches longer. But with this knife, I would trust my life with this knife, especially where I put the dirt time into this knife and I know exactly what it can do. But I want to thank you for all your views, comments, and support. 
I have a trapping class coming in um, November so come to my website down below and check it out and until next time God bless